MuScore doesn't have a default document, so we actually use their uh, setup wizard. And so we'll start out, we'll go ahead and enter our title and our name. I'm going to click continue. Now we have to select um, um, a st an instrument. They don't have just simply treble clef, which is unfortunate, but we'll, uh, we'll work with that. We'll go ahead and add the flute. And we'll continue. Uh, we're going to start in the key of C, so we won't worry about that. And uh, we're going to change our time signatures right from the start. Okay, there is no pickup measure, but there should be 30 measures because we're having uh, 15 scales. And so we're going to click Done. All right, so this is what it ends up looking like. Um, MuseScore has a plug-in that will let you put a break every um, couple of measures. And um, because this, the way it puts things together, you see everything on the one staff, I found that to be kind of uh, cumbersome. So I decided to go ahead and do that first on this. Okay, so now we're going to add in our time signatures. Uh, the shortcut for that is T, the same as in Sibelius. Um, you'll see that MuseScore does mimic Sibelius in many ways. I've already created these time signatures in here, but if you needed to add a new time signature, let's say I wanted 7-1, um, you just do that and you click Add and then it's here. And when you want to add time signatures, you click and you drag it into the score. And it has to get really close to the bar line before it will actually uh, drop in. So when you see it highlighted, you can do it. Now, there is no way, as near as I can figure yet, to copy the time signatures. So you have to do this all manually. That's a little slow and cumbersome as well. All right, so we're ready to enter the notes now. We press the N key, um, and it's prepared. And then you also press the 7 key to make sure you're selecting whole notes. And you should be able to play it in from the MIDI keyboard. Looks like I'm an octave too low. Okay, and then I enter my chords. Oops. Well, that's kind of interesting. Okay, so let's try that again. I have a key that's a little broken on this keyboard. Try it again. There we go. <laughs> okay, so there's my keys. Press the escape key to stop entering notes. And so now I can copy these. Now, it's unfortunate. Oh, um, actually, before we copy, let's go ahead and enter in our lyric or our analysis. And so we create text, lyrics, under that note. And we type one, four, Five. So now I'm ready to copy all of this. I, you know, as, as I said, it would not copy the time signature, so you, that's why those have been entered in manually. I'm going to use the shortcut command C, which is a standard Mac shortcut. And then I'll click here and command V. And we'll just command V each time. There is no paste multiple as in finale. Um, but fortunately, it is pasting the lyric, the analysis, and I don't have to do that every single time, which is very nice. And so there we have it. We've got this all in here. Um, now, I've tried numerous ways to get this to, um, oops, there it is, numerous ways to get this to copy and uh, to transpose. And so if you go up to the notes menu, the transpose section is right there. And so theoretically, if I select this and I say G major and I tell it to transpose key signatures and don't use double sharps and flats, um, this should um, move this to the closest. Actually, I want this to move it up specifically. And this should add the key signature, but it does not. As you can see, there's no key signature there, and I'd have to manually add it. However, if I add the key signature right now, it's going to transpose all of these without transposing the notes, uh, which makes it kind of confusing to figure out what, how we're going to transpose all of this. So what my solution has been 
to go back and s start here. And I found this to be just the easiest way. Um, actually, before I do that, let me undo that transposition, is to go to this measure and go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and transpose that. Okay. And I'll transpose it. Actually, it looks like I didn't get that selected. There we go. Okay, we'll transpose it. And I'm going to transpose it to by interval rather than by key, so I don't confuse things too much. Okay, so I want to transpose this up a perfect fourth to F. So this will be good for you to work on your transpositions anyway. So um, I'm not even going to tell it to transpose the key signatures. Um, and then I can press key, and I can get my key signature and drag it in here and, f and fix that. Okay, all right, so that I'm going to do, continue to do all of this, um, and I have to do it all pretty much the same way, so I'm going to go transpose. Um, now, one of the things I do know about this program is I can change the shortcuts, and so I may actually have to uh, come up with a shortcut for transpose, um, which would probably save me a whole lot of time. Uh, but I'm not going to do that right now because that's a little more advanced than we want. So um, F, we need to go to B flat, so I want to transpose it down a major second. No double sharps and flats, and click OK. Now it lets me put key signatures in. I just think that you know key signatures and transposition ought to be um, be working together. So now I'm pressing the key. I press the key, and I also found again that I have to put these in backwards because otherwise it just confuses this program. And so um, I I'm going to go from back here and do it rather than and so this is a little counterintuitive, and uh, uh, you know I'm going to certainly give my feedback on this because it's kind of silly that I'm having to do it this way. Okay, and as with the time signatures, you have to get pretty close to the bar line before it'll let you drop. All right, so I got these all in there. Now, I've still got these courtesy accidentals and that, so let's go up into this edit general style. And I thought we turned these off, but I guess we'll turn them off. Okay, so we turn these off, um, and I also, I'm going to tell it to t turn off the time, not create time signatures, but it seems like it does anyway, so, yeah, because now that you notice they're not hiding at all. And so these are all there. I do want to get rid of the, the staff name, so to do that, you right-click and staff property, and uh, you just take out the name here and the short instrument name, and click OK. Let's see, is there anything else we can do here? Nope. Okay, so that goes, that gets rid of that. Now, um, so we're, we're actually pretty close here right now. The only thing we really have left to do is to get this all on one staff. Oh, wait, we also have to get rid of these uh, accident, these naturals. So if you click on these, it'll hide naturals for you too. I'm right clicking again. Again, it would be nice if there was a global command to turn these off, but there is not. Okay, and so the same thing is going to be true. Now, this is going to be quite tedious. I have to basically set all of the meters invisible one at a time. And again, that takes far longer than I want it to. Okay, now, the last thing that I have to do, oh, it looks like I missed the first one. Yep, okay, there we go. Okay, so now we want to get this all into one page, that, which is actually fairly simple. We go to the page settings, and we go right over here to scaling and space, and we just start decreasing it. And you'll notice that over here on the right, it starts showing you what it looks like, and you'll notice that right now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have ten on that side already, and over here on my page, I only have eight. So just by decreasing it a little bit, okay, and so we just keep going one, two, three, four, five. apply and there we are um, wonder if we could make this just a little bigger nope okay so these ended up quite small um, a little smaller than I probably would have liked I wonder if I can make this um, 
just simply one millimeter and apply. How about one point? Yeah, that makes it look a little better. How about 1.2? Nope. 1.1 1 .1 seems to be the max. Yep. Okay, so I got it pretty much where I want it to be. Um, and now we're done.